Buckingham Palace has released details about the celebration that will truly be fit for a king. It's the coronation of King Charles III. The events are spread over three days, with the coronation itself set for Saturday, May the 6th. It's a chance for the royal family to turn over a new leaf and for British business to get even a greater boost. You can bank on the occasion to bring out millions of royal enthusiasts and generate a celebratory spending splurge. Now, to Fortnum and Masons, which, of course, sell a purveyor. You don't sell, they purvey. Luxury goods. Well, what have they sent me? They've sent me some rather nice biscuits. Tophilosus biscuits. I'm not sure what they are, but they'll go down well. Uh, they also have a royal warrant by appointment to His Majesty the King, now I imagine, and returned to profit last year, which is quite remarkable. Ooh, sparkling tea. That will go I should have opened that by now. Uh, Thomas Athman is the CEO of Fortnum's, and he is with me. Uh, you don't mind me just calling it Fortnum's. That's what people do, isn't it? Not at all. Good to be on the show. Thank you for having me. So, what plans are you making for the coronation? So, we'll be launching a range of products at the end of March uh, to celebrate... Uh, the, um, the coronation. Our, our relationship with the royal family goes back, or the royal household more broadly, goes back to 1707, when Fortnum's was founded by a footman to Queen Anne, who asked for permission to um, take some melted-down candles from the court at St James's, reconstitute them into new candles, and sell them pretty much on the site that we trade from today on Piccadilly. So our relationship with the royal household goes back 300 years or so, and we're super proud of it. The Fortnum's... And I also declare an interest, or to, to, to be transparent, I do send Fortnum hampers to some select friends at Christmas. They are things that people do, but you're not the sort of place you pop out to just for your everyday groceries, are you? Pro I mean, you're not Sainsbury's or Tesco's. No, probably not. Um, I mean, I think that we are... I mean, you talked about us being purveyors earlier. You know, we like to think of ourselves as purveyors of extraordinary food and drink and joy-giving things, so things that sit outside food but, but very much connect to what food is all about. But you'd be surprised um, how broad and democratic our customer base is, actually. The average item price of something sold in Fortnum's is actually only £12. So whilst we're a luxury business and we're in the business of extraordinary food and drink, it's actually very accessible. You know, you can buy a jar of jam, and let me tell you, it's the world's best jam for five ninety five at Fortnum's. Oh, well, there's any jam in the, in the packet. <laughs> um, if we look at the where you expand, the temptation is to franchise or expand a shop in New York, a shop in Paris, a mm. shop in Sydney, a mm. shop... Many British companies have tried it. Mm. Harrods, of course, notably has. Yep. And most have failed. Yeah, I think that we've got a big opportunity to expand, I guess, to really think about a domestic customer base as much as anything else. We launched uh, our online business a few years back. Um, Pre-COVID, it was running at around sort of somewhere between 10 and 15% of our sales. What's happened over COVID is we've managed to uh, grow that business. And so it's now responsible for, well, certainly for our last financial year, it's responsible for 40% of our sales now. But when you send outside of the UK, yeah. you've got where... I mean, you were telling me sending to Europe is difficult. Sending to Europe is very difficult and has been since Brexit. Um, it... Are you annoyed that the government has been told again and again and again that companies are having it tough exporting to Europe and they don't seem to be doing anything. Look, it's, it's intensely frustrating, yes. Um, you know, it was responsible for around 10% of our business pre-COVID and, of course, we've lost that almost overnight. Um, but but we, we can't wait for the government to improve relationships with, um, uh, with the EU, although I sincerely hope that, uh, that they do, uh, to the extent that we can start exporting food again. But until then, what we've got to do is form our own arrangements. And so we'll be opening up a logistics operation inside the EU... Uh, probably in the second half of this year, which means we'll be able to start selling to our, uh, to our valued customers in the EU for next Christmas. Now, when you say a logistics centre, yeah. that, that means does that mean sourcing in the EU to supply that centre or just doing one big bulk into the EU? It's the latter. So, effectively, we'll be exporting to ourselves into somewhere in Europe, house it in a distribution centre, and then we will send... Uh, products uh, to customers from there. Yes, you can tell. You can tell that it's it's quality <laughs> stuff. It's making a noise as I'm trying to open them. Oh, I say these are oh look at these. So these are delicious. These are Tofflosus biscuits. They're made for us by a family firm that's been making these biscuits for us for 40 years. And actually, what you've just opened is a refill. So what we do is we normally sell our biscuits in the tins, which you were holding up earlier, but our customers were saying to us, we love these biscuits, but we can't bring ourselves to buy another tin, 
So we're now selling them as refill packs. Where's your, ex where, where's your expansion? I know you want to open in terminals and airports, but uh, particularly in the UK, where's yep. your big expansion going to be? So big expansion, uh, we think there's a big opportunity inside the UK to serve our customers yep. better. The thing about having one shop on Piccadilly is that it's not accessible to everyone. So we're opening it. So we're really investing behind our online business. That, of course, allows us to export more to the, um, to the US, uh, uh, to the Middle East, um, and to the EU, hopefully later this year. We've just opened a shop and a restaurant in Hong Kong. And we've also opened in Hong Kong airports. I'd love to see more uh, uh, shops open in airports. Actually, I think that that's a um, it, it's a that's a good market for us. We need we need lot we need lots of footfall of very intentional customers. Do have a biscuit. I will. They're absolutely delicious. Absolutely. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. I was hoping he was going to say no. Then there'd be more for me. I shall follow more later. Thank you, sir. Very good to see you. Well, I appreciate.